When we first saw Bloodhound back in April, the car was very much a work in progress. It didn't even have any wheels or bodywork. But fast forward five months and the 1000 mile hour car is almost finished. This weekend, Bloodhound gets its public unveiling in Canary Wharf. We're here at the press preview day to get a closer look. Over 8,000 Bloodhound fans have ordered tickets to see the car, which will be on show in East London's Canary Wharf on the 25th and 26th of October. There, they will get to see the car up close, experience a 1,000 mile per hour run through a virtual reality headset, and try their hand at racing Bloodhound on a simulator. Covering a mile in 3.6 seconds might make all of Bloodhound's headlines, but there's much more to it than that. Okay, Bloodhound is about breaking the world land speed record and producing the world's fastest car, but the curious thing is that's not its prime objective. Its prime objective is to create change and uh, in, generate a new generation of scientists and engineers. And we're being very, very successful at that. We have an education team which uh, now has some 6,000 schools on the project, another 1,000 schools in South Africa, huge amount of interest. Richard is no stranger to breaking world land speed records. He broke the record himself in 1983 with a run of 633 miles per hour. Then Project managed the most recent record, which in 1997 saw Thrust SSC break the sound barrier and set a record of 763 miles per hour. Now he wants to see Bloodhound first reach 800 and then 1000 miles an hour. Absolutely. I mean, basically, well, the whole team was absolutely knackered after Thrust SC. It took most people about two years to personally recover from it all. We swore we'd never ever come back, and here we are. <laughs> that is simply because the Americans decided they were going to create our, uh, uh, a car to take our supersonic record. So we thought we'd set the bar so high they'd find it difficult to come back. We know that the Australians are building a car, which is really good, and the Americans have another 800 mile hour car um, in under development. So, you know, hopefully it's going to build and build and build. Uh, well, the interesting thing about this is we think this is about as fast as you can possibly go. But uh, we're probably wrong. In terms of the acceleration, the, the, the effect on the human body, uh, we're accelerating at around 2G and decelerating around 3G. These are not very big values. And uh, years and years ago, I had dinner with Jim Lovell, the astronaut. And I said to Jim, you know, uh, what, what, what do you think the human body can work under? And he said, basically, when they were doing the, uh, um, uh, the link-up between the Gemini spaceship and the Agena, they, uh, they were pulling around 9G. So we've got a long way to go. <laughs> Bloodhound has been built in a Bristol workshop by a team of military personnel and ex-Formula One engineers. Many of these highly skilled men and women will return to active duty once Bloodhound sets the record in 2017. As such, the Ministry of Defence has been heavily involved with the project from day one. Well, the Ministry of Defence has been backing this project from the start. We've provided the EJ200 engine, which provides the main thrust for the vehicle. This is backing the best of British engineering. We're here in the centre of the best of British banking to demonstrate to the world that the car is now here, close to being ready to run. Very exciting example of the best of British uh, trying to break the world land speed record. Our real motivation for backing this project is to encourage the, engine, the school kids of today to become the engineers of tomorrow. The Ministry of Defence is the largest employer of school leavers into engineering, into the Army, into the Navy, into the Air Force, and we've had many of these young people actually working on the project to get some experience of being at, at the leading edge of technology. So the driver is a wing commander in the RAF, he already holds the world land speed record Andy Green, and we're supporting him in this effort here. There are engineers from RIMI, the Royal uh, mechanical engineers, as well as from the Royal Air Force who built the Finn, who have been involved in the construction of the project uh, all the way through. So it's providing a, a great opportunity for young people in the armed forces who are involved, interested in, sort of, in technical mechanics, mechanical engineering, to take part, play their own part in this project. After being shown off in public, Bloodhound will return to its workshop before being flown to Hackskeen Pan in South Africa next year. The team hopes it will be ready to break the land speed record and reach 800 miles per hour on the 15th of October 2016, exactly 19 years after the current record was set.